Have you ever finished a workout, something you were told was good for you, but instead of feeling energized and sharp, you felt a little fuzzy, a little more tired than you expected, maybe even a bit forgetful? Or perhaps you've been diligently exercising for years, but you're just not seeing the mental clarity, the sharpness that you were promised. You're doing everything right, you're showing up, you're putting in the time, process. So why does it sometimes feel like your brain is in a fog? What if I told you that two of the most common, most widely recommended exercises for seniors exercises, you might be doing this very week, could actually be working against your brain health? It sounds crazy, I know. We're taught that all movement is good movement. But the latest science is revealing something fascinating and frankly, critical for anyone over the age of 60. It's not just about if you exercise, it's about how you exercise. And certain popular methods done with the best of intentions might be creating a state of chronic stress in your body that quietly damages the very brain cells you're trying to protect. In this video, we're gonna pull back the curtain on these two surprisingly harmful exercise habits. We'll dive into the simple science of why they can hurt your memory and focus. And more importantly, I'm gonna show you the powerful, simple switches you can make starting today to turn your physical activity into a true brain-boosting powerhouse. This isn't about making you feel guilty or telling you you've been doing it all wrong. This is about empowering you with new knowledge so you can work smarter, not just harder, to keep your mind as strong and vibrant as your body. Before we jump in, if you're passionate about keeping your mind sharp and your body healthy for all the years to come, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and click that little bell for notifications. We share the kind of health insights here that can make a real difference in your daily life. And I'm always curious to know who I'm talking to. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite way to stay active right now? Is it walking, swimming, gardening? I love reading about what our community is up to. All right, let's get into it. The first common exercise habit that could be silently harming your brain is what I call the chronic cardio trap. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about long, slow, steady state cardio. This is the bedrock of what most people think of as senior fitness. It's hopping on a treadmill for 45 minutes at the same steady pace. It's using the elliptical machine for an hour while you watch the news. It's riding a stationary bike going nowhere for a long, unbroken stretch of time. We were all told this was the gold standard for heart health. You get your heart rate up into that fat burning zone and you just hold it there. It feels productive, right? You're sweating, you're putting in the time, you feel like you've earned your rest. But here's the hidden danger for your brain. When you perform this kind of moderate intensity exercise for extended periods, say longer than 30 or 40 minutes, your body produces a hormone called cortisol. You probably heard of it, it's the stress hormone. In short bursts, cortisol is essential. It helps you wake up in the morning, it gives you a surge of energy to escape danger, that classic fight or flight response. But our bodies were not designed for that system to be switched on for long periods, day after day. When you're on that treadmill for an hour, your body doesn't know you're safely in a gym. It just perceives a prolonged, low-level stressor. It thinks, we've been running for a long time, we must be running from something. So, it keeps pumping out cortisol, and this is where the trouble for your brain begins. Chronically elevated cortisol is one of the most toxic things for your brain tissue, particularly for a delicate seahorse-shaped region called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is your memory center. It's where you form new memories, where you store directions, where you recall the names of your grandchildren. And groundbreaking research has shown that high levels of cortisol literally shrink the hippocampus. It's neurotoxic, it kills off existing brain cells, and just as importantly, it stops the creation of new ones. Think of it like this. You're trying to grow a beautiful garden in your brain, but with every long plotting workout, you're spraying a little bit of weed killer on it. You're causing chronic low-grade inflammation in the very organ you're trying to keep healthy. Have you ever felt that? You finish a long workout, you get home, and you can't remember what you needed from the grocery store. Or you walk into a room and completely forget why you went in there. 
we often chalk that up to being tired from the exercise. But it can be a direct symptom of that cortisol-induced brain fog. Your brain is literally struggling to function optimally because it's been bathed in stress hormones. A study published in the journal Neurology looked at over 2,000 middle-aged adults and found a direct link between higher cortisol levels and poorer memory and even visible brain shrinkage on scans. The people with the highest cortisol levels performed worse on memory, organization, and visual perception tests. Their brains were quite literally aging faster. And uh, long grinding cardio sessions are a direct pathway to elevating that cortisol day in and day out. So does this mean you should just stop doing cardio? Absolutely not. Your heart needs it, your body needs it. It means we need to do it smarter. We need to switch from the long, slow plod to something that gives you a bigger brain boosting bang for your buck in far less time. The solution is something you may have heard of, but maybe you thought was only for young elite athletes. It's called high intensity interval training or HIT. Now, please don't let the name scare you. When we talk about HIT for seniors, we are not talking about flipping tractor tires or doing box jumps. We are talking about a simple, powerful principle, alternating short bursts of effort with periods of rest or gentle recovery. This approach completely changes the hormonal response in your body. Instead of producing a long, slow drip of toxic cortisol, these short bursts of effort trigger the release of something truly magical for your brain. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. Scientists and doctors call BDNF miracle grow for the brain. It is a protein that acts like a fertilizer for your brain cells. It helps existing neurons survive, it encourages the growth of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis, and it builds stronger connections between them. A brain rich in BDNF is a brain that learns faster, remembers more, and is far more resilient against age-related decline and diseases like Alzheimer's. And here's the incredible part. Studies have shown that interval training can produce significantly more BDNF than steady state cardio in a fraction of the time. You are getting a more potent, brain protective stimulus in 15 or 20 minutes than you would in an hour of plotting on the elliptical. Why? Because your body responds to the intensity of the signal. The short, sharp challenge tells your brain, hey, wake up, we need to adapt, get stronger, build new pathways to handle this. The long, slow plod just tells your body to endure. One builds resilience, the other just builds fatigue. So. What does this look like in the real world for someone over 60, 70, or even 80? It's wonderfully simple. Let's say you walk for exercise. Instead of just walking at the same pace for 30 minutes, you would do this. Warm up for three to five minutes with a gentle stroll. Then for 30 seconds, pick up your pace. You're not sprinting for your life. You're just walking briskly. Maybe you're pumping your arms, walking with purpose, a pace where it would be a little difficult to hold a full conversation. After those 30 seconds are up, you slow way down, you meander. You catch your breath for 60 to 90 seconds, and then you repeat that cycle. A burst of effort followed by recovery. You might do this six to eight times. The whole workout, including warm up and cool down, might only take 20 minutes. This principle can be applied to almost anything. On a stationary bike, pedal hard for 30 seconds, then pedal very slowly for 90 seconds. In a swimming pool, swim one length with strong effort, then the next length at a slow, easy pace. You get the idea. The key is the contrast, the up and down. That is the signal that unleashes the brain-boosting, anti-aging magic without the damaging cortisol bath. You'll finish feeling energized and clear-headed, not drained and foggy. I know it might feel unsettling to hear that a habit you thought was so healthy might have a hidden downside. But please, hear me on this. Knowledge is power. It's not your fault. This is what we were all told for decades. But the science has moved on, and now we can move on with it. You have the power to make this simple switch. 
If this is already making you rethink your workout routine, do me a favor and tap that like button. It's a small thing, but it lets me know that this information is helpful and that we're on the right track together. Now, that brings us to the second common exercise that can be surprisingly damaging to your brain health. This one takes place in the weight room, and it's something most gyms actively encourage for seniors because it's seen as safe. I'm talking about using isolation weight machines. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The leg extension machine where you sit down and just straighten your knees. The chest press machine where you sit and push handles forward. The bicep curl machine. They're comfortable. You're sitting down, you're supported, and you're working one single muscle or muscle group at a time. It seems like the perfect controlled way to build strength without getting hurt. But in protecting your body from what seems like risk, you are robbing your brain of its most important job during exercise to think your brain is not just a passenger when you move. It is the master coordinator. When you perform a movement in the real world, like getting up out of a chair, your brain has to perform a million calculations in a split second. It has to fire your quadriceps, your glutes, your hamstrings, your core muscles, all in the right sequence with the right amount of force. It has to constantly adjust your balance, taking in feedback from your feet, your inner ear, your eyes. It has to coordinate your entire body to work as a single harmonious unit. This complex dance of coordination and balance is a phenomenal workout for your brain. It strengthens neural pathways and keeps your cognitive processing fast and efficient. Now, think about what happens when you sit down at a leg extension machine. You've locked your body into place. The machine dictates the path of movement. Your brain's only job is to send one simple signal, straighten the leg. That's it. There is no balance required, no coordination between muscle groups, no stabilization from your core. You have effectively taken your brain out of the equation. It's what I call mindless muscle work. You might be building a little bit of strength in your quadriceps, but you are completely missing the opportunity to build a stronger, more connected, and more resilient brain. Aging well isn't just about having strong muscles. It's about having a brain that knows how to use those muscles effectively in the real world. This is what we call functional strength. Who cares if you can push a lot of weight on a leg press machine if you can't get up off the floor by yourself? Or if you don't have the balance to step off a curb without fear of falling? Falls are one of the biggest threats to independence for seniors, and falls are a failure of the brain-body connection. They are a failure of balance and coordination, the very things that isolation machines ignore. Furthermore, these machines can often put unnatural stress on your joints. The leg extension machine, for instance, is notoriously hard on the knee joint because it places a shearing force on it that your knee was not designed to handle. So not only is it a poor exercise for your brain, it can actively contribute to the joint pain that might make you less likely to move at all. So what's the brain boosting alternative? It's simple. We trade the mindless machines for smart functional movements that force your brain and body to work together as a team. And you don't need a fancy gym to do it. The king of all functional exercises is the simple squat, but I'm not talking about loading a heavy barbell on your back. I'm talking about a chair squat. Stand in front of a sturdy chair with your feet shoulder width apart. Slowly, with control, lower yourself down until your bottom just taps the chair, and then, without plopping down, push through your heels and stand back up. Feel that? Your brain had to coordinate everything, your legs, your glutes, your core, and it had to manage your balance the whole way down and up. That is a brain exercise and a body exercise, all in one. As you get stronger, you can do it without the chair, just squatting down as low as you comfortably can. Instead of a seated machine row, grab a simple resistance band, anchor it to a doorknob, stand with your feet planted, core engaged, and pull the band towards you, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Now your brain has to stabilize your entire body against the pull of the band. It's working so much harder and so much smarter. Instead of a leg curl machine, try a simple standing balance exercise. 
Stand near a wall or counter for support and just lift one foot off the ground for 30 seconds. Feel all those tiny muscles in your standing leg and foot firing away. That's your brain making thousands of micro adjustments to keep you upright. That is infinitely more valuable for fall prevention and brain health than any machine. Another fantastic one is the farmer's walk. Just pick up something with a bit of weight in each hand. It could be grocery bags, small dumbbells, or jugs of water and walk across the room. This simple act teaches your brain to maintain posture, grip, strength, and coordination under a load, which is exactly what you do in daily life. The goal is to choose exercises that look and feel more like real life. Movements that involve standing on your own two feet, engaging your core, and challenging your balance, even in a small way. Every time you do this, you're not just strengthening your muscles, you are reinforcing the vital communication lines between your brain and your body, keeping them fast, clear, and efficient. You're building a brain that is quick to react, stable, and confident in its ability to navigate the world. So let's quickly recap the two big brain boosting shifts we're gonna make. First, we are swapping out the long, slow cortisol producing cardio for short, sharp, brain fertilizing intervals. Less time, more benefits, more energy, less brain fog. Second, we are ditching the mindless isolation machines and embracing smart functional movements that challenge our balance and coordination. We're choosing exercises that force the brain and body to be true partners, building real world strength that keeps us independent and safe. It might feel like a lot to take in, but remember, this is not about a total overhaul overnight. It's about making small, intelligent changes. Maybe this week you just try adding a few 30-second bursts of speed to your daily walk. Or maybe you trade just one of your machine exercises for a set of chair squats. Every single smart choice is a deposit in your brain bank, an investment in a future where your mind is clear, your memory is strong, and your body is capable. Growing older is inevitable, but growing weaker and foggier is not. It's a choice. And by using smarter strategies like these, you are actively choosing a path of strength, vitality, and mental clarity. I know it can be hard. I know some days the joints ache and motivation is low, but you are not alone in this. And it is never, ever too late to make a change that can profoundly impact your quality of life. Imagine being able to remember names and dates with ease, to play with your grandkids without getting exhausted, to navigate your life with confidence and independence. That is what we are fighting for, one smart workout at a time. Now, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Which of these two exercise types were you most surprised to learn about? Have you been doing long cardio sessions or using weight machines? And more importantly, what is one small, smart change you are excited to try this week after watching this? Please share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. I read them all, and your experiences help our entire community learn and grow together. If this video opened your eyes or gave you a new sense of hope and control over your health, please hit that like button. It means the world to me, and it helps this vital information reach other seniors who need to hear it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. We're on a mission here to rewrite the story of aging, and I want you right there with me for every step of the journey. Thank you so much for your time and your trust today. Remember, every smart step you take, every mindful movement you make is a powerful declaration that you are in charge of your health. Stay strong, stay sharp, and I'll see you in the next video.